Hey, Bible lovers, welcome to part three of my interview with the Cromwell Leather Group and their president, Thomas Fleisch. I'm excited today about the topic because we're talking about bonded leather. How is it made? How does it get its grain? Why is it so durable? What are some of the contents that kind of make it bond together? So check it out. It's very interesting. When you see bonded leather, especially, is there a difference between, and maybe you'll know this, between genuine bonded leather? Because it's always a running joke in these Bible groups is the genuine bonded leather and bonded leather. Right. Uh, is there a difference? How is it made? And how does it hold up? The best Bible leather is is, is the genuine leather. And, and we feel for a variety of reasons, which is it would be interesting to talk about why cowhide is the best. Mm -hmm. Down from that, the next step is bonded leather, bonded leather fibers, it's sometimes called, or recycled leather or recycled leather fibers. And then below that is paper or plastic. So plastic is the petroleum based and the paper is, is tree wood based. Mm -hmm. what, what bonded leather is, is it's fibers taken from the backside of cowhide during the tanning process where the cowhide is shaved on that back or suede side to achieve the desired thickness of the leather. You know, if you're making a leather for saddles or for for soles of shoes, it could be like that. But if you're making leather for clothing or handbags or a wallet or upholstery, it would be a lot thinner. So there's mm -hmm. a process, part of the process of making that thinner is the shaving. And so the leather fibers from the backside, from the suede side come off. And we use those as our raw material. It's done at an early stage in the tanning process where there's no color put in. It's, it's just all uniform, and that is our raw material. Now, using bonded leather is particularly environmentally helpful because most of the leather shavings, those fibers in the world from tanneries, are still sent to a landfill, and that's a lot each day. We at Cromwell process between five and 10 tons of leather fibers every day as our wow. raw material every working day for our bonded leather. And the process is to take those fibers and in a process that's not too dissimilar in principle from making paper, although bonded leather is very different than paper, but the process of forming the bonded leather, instead of using water pulp fibers, we're using leather fibers. We mix it with oils and tanning ingredients tanning oils, and then we bond those fibers together with natural latex. That's what holds them together. So that it forms onto a, a large machine that's over a hundred yards long, and it goes through a dewatering process, the water coming out by gravity, then by pressing, then by drying, and in the end, it gets rolled up. So that's what happens, and you're right, there's no grain pattern to it. We do put a basic color in there, either a gray or a tan or whatever we need for a white leather. But the, the bonded leather is achieved in, in rolls and it ends up looking like this. If you can see it well. This is the back side of the bonded leather. The other side is where we put on the color and the grain. We'll get to that in a moment. But it's certainly a recycling system and it, it hel is helpful to the environment in, in that respect. To your question about genuine bonded leather or other words, rightfully, bonded leather should be called bonded leather or bonded leather fibers or recycled leather or recycled leather fibers. Genuine bonded leather is, in my view, somewhat confusing mm -hmm. and a little silly, but it's out there. It's also inappropriate to just call it leather because that also could be confusing. It's better to be careful about conveying what it, what it actually is. Yeah. One analogy I think you'll find interesting, Tim, is since it's a product from a cow, you could make a comparison to beef. And our cowhide is like steak and our bonded leather is like hamburger. Still beef, but it has been ground up and formed mm -hmm. like you would form it into a patty. So that's kind of a a rough a sense of what it is where and where it comes from. What I've described so far is just making this base material, the base bonded leather with no grain. 
then we make in a process that's quite similar to our genuine leather, we impart the color, the protection, and the grain through something similar to the stamping we were talking about. Yeah. And I'm looking at the ones that the samples that I have and the grain obviously isn't as deep because the leather is not as thick. Right. Right. So I did not know that bonded leather, now I knew bonded leather was leather pieces, but I did not know it was from basically when you split the leather or pare it down to make it thinner that you salvage those pieces. That's, that's pretty fascinating. That's right. So splitting with a horizontal band knife is the first process in, in making it thinner, but then it's not uniform enough so that the shaving, which achieves, takes the fibers off the back suede side, is, is the process where the bonded leather fibers come from. But it's not, some people think it's old shoes, you know, or, or, or used leather products. It's not, it's, it's, it's very uniform fibers, but it's still reutilizing a, a waste product from the tanning process. And you mentioned latex. Now, am I, and when, when I think latex, I think like rubber. Is that, is that what it is? Well, it comes from the same source. It comes from heavy a tree. It's processed somewhat differently, but it's used to make the fibers adhere to each other. In wood, the lignin and wood fibers, they adhere naturally to each other. The leather fibers don't. So you need a bonding element. And that's why it's called bonded leather because they are bonded to one another, the fibers through latex. And I would say it's approximately 80% leather fibers in the product. And the rest is mainly the natural latex, but also the tanning oils and the colorants and the other products we use. And then one other thing that we could get some further information on is the longevity of your bonded leather. One thing Margaret told me at the expo when it really piqued my interest is with the bonded leather, she said that, I think you all started off saying 10 years and now she mentioned 30 plus years. 30 years is a long time for bonded leather. Is that warranted or is that just the average lifespan and what, what causes it to last that long? Yeah, well, we're comfortable warranting it for at least that amount of time. We have books here that were printed and bound in 1993, 1995, and even earlier, which you look at and say, they're yeah, fine, they're the same as the, the first day. So unless something is mistreated, and it would be hard to do that in the, with, a, with a Bible, even if you used it a lot, but the pages are going to wear out first. So we, we used to say bonded leather is a generation and genuine leather is generations or hundreds of years. But now we think maybe we were a little bit understating it because our bonded leather lasts longer than that in our own experience. If you want to have a Bible where you're writing in family history and you want your grandchildren to have it and look at it, then I think the choice is for genuine leather. Also your own use and the feel and the loveliness of it. But you can be comfortable that the Cromwell bonded leather is made to endure at least those 30 years and warranty for that. So I think it, it would probably be a lot longer. Right. So if you wanted a Bible that you just want to last for a good portion of your life, bonded leather would be fine. It would be. It would but be. if it's something to last your whole life or to be generational, then you definitely want to go with that genuine. I think so. Well, I hope you enjoyed that segment where we learned a little bit more about bonded leather. And maybe now you have a better idea of how your bonded leather is made, especially your Cromwell bonded leather and why it's so durable. Now, tomorrow, Thomas is going to be sharing with us why he thinks that cowhide and even more specifically Cromwell cowhide is better than other leathers to include goat skin and beyond. Sure to be a fascinating segment. Come back tomorrow and check it out. God bless you. Keep calm. Jesus on.